All right, well, we'll get started. Um, so we are live streaming this right now. All of this will be available later on YouTube for those who don't catch the beginning, but um, let's just jump right into it. Um, so first off, wanted to welcome all of you to another session of um, NTOP Live. Today, we'll be looking at support structures. Um, so my name is Anna Norden. I'm a customer success engineer here at Entopology. Um, so yeah, we'll be diving into a support structure workflow that was created within NTOP platform. And while this will help um, introduce some of the support structure tools that we have within the software, it'll also bring in a little bit of play with some of our math features to enable printing requirements. Those who are familiar with additive printing, 3D manufacturing, you know that support structures can take many forms. So uh, a lot of you are familiar with removable support structures. So the kind of support structures that are tapered near the end, able to break off and make for a clean part after manufacturing. But in this case, we're going to actually be looking at internal support structures. So these are areas that perhaps aren't as easily accessible when you're printing. Maybe you can't get into them after manufacturing and remove that support. So we want to focus on some kind of support that is able to build properly um, within the 3D world and also not add too much material. So then we can um, limit the kind of material and focus on those lightweighting techniques. So I guess we'll just jump into the workflow. So as you can see here, this is our final product um, that we build within this workflow, but we'll start from scratch. Um, or as, as you can see here, we have this part here. This is the initial part that we want supported. And then we have this lattice structure that is nicely supporting it um, that we built within the workflow. So as far as the basic workflow, what we're gonna wanna do is just start with any part. So in this case, I've imported a part this could also be an implicit body that you've either generated or manipulated within NTOP platform. Um, and if you're bringing it in from some other CAD software, the first step you're gonna wanna do is convert those into implicit bodies. So here I have um, these two different parts. Um, this outer space, uh, what I defined as an outer space. This is just the part that I'm going to want to be supported. In this case, we've got this nice open shell here. In another case, it might be something closed off, hence why you want to keep those internal support structures. And then also I have this inner space that's just defining that space that I want to fill. So the first step uh, or the next step after bringing in your geometry, working with that geometry is using the manufacturing support volume block. And this is a very powerful block. And basically what it does is create a voxel grid based on these inputs here. So I will show what has been created here um, and how this was built was first by defining the body. So this is the body that we want supported. In this case, we have this green shell here and that's gonna be our body. Next is defining the build plane. Here, as you can see, we just have our build plane building from right about where that outer shell begins. Um, and so this is giving you direction, giving you orientation as to that initial plane that we're starting from and then building up from within that 3D manufacturing process. Next up, we're looking at feature size. And what this means is what the size of the features that the voxel grid is going to create. So in this case, we have a minimum of 0 0.015 millimeters. Um, here I have 0.015, um, a little bit smaller, but we're, they usually range from 0.015 to 0.5 millimeters. Um, so depending on if you're going smaller or larger, having a smaller feature size, it's gonna be a little bit slower to build. However, it's gonna capture those features better. Um, in this case, it's pretty simple, but if you had things a little bit more detailed, you wanna make sure you're getting all of those right spaces to make sure you're grabbing everything. Um, if you're going for a larger feature size, it's going to be quicker, but you're going to have to sacrifice detail a little bit. So it's kind of deciding where in between the, the, that range that you feel is best fit. Um, next, we're looking at overhang angle. <clears throat> so in most cases, we wanna have an overhang angle of 45 degrees so that everything can build properly. 
Um, this here's 45 degrees, just converted, um, automatically converted into radians because that's what um, our end top system is reading in. Um, also, if you had a minimum overhang, you could define that too. So then you're building that support structure, basically any anywhere within that range that you're defining. Um, also looking at support regions, in this case, I'm grabbing all regions. However, we can look at external regions or internal regions, especially if we're getting into those spaces that are in completely um, enclosed, that's when we'd want to grab the internal. But in our case, we're gonna grab all the regions. Um, and then if anything, we can trim back from there. Um, so once building that support volume, you can do a lot of different things depending on the support application. Um, but in this case, we're going to convert this into an implicit body so that we're able to manipulate it and better work with it. So the next step um, in this workflow <clears throat> is creating a volume lattice that will be um, what is going to be actually supporting this shell structure. So what I did here was grab a volume lattice block. And for our volume, we have our design space. Um, here, let me turn on the visibility here. You can see it looks pretty simple, just a bunch of columns, uh, column structure here because that's what I defined. But if we go through the inputs, we have our um, volume, which was that original design space that we choose, unit type. You can see I pulled up a couple of variables up here. That's what the, the chips that are appearing here looks like because I knew that they were valuable variables that um, I was might be interested in, in changing and iterating through later on. So I have this column type. Um, you can see there's a lot of types here available for within the volume lattice. Um, but here I chose a column because I want that singular um, up and down structure. Um, and then for the fill type, I did all touching because I want to make sure I'm grabbing all of the different kinds of um, lattices that are available or all the unit cells that are available. And then from there, we can go back and trim that away. As far as our vector, I also grabbed these as um, important variables. So if you see up here, I have this X, Y scale that's being applied to both of them. That's because in this case, I want my X and my Y to be the same value. So just grabbed it, um, defined it as that constant three millimeters and was able to pull it into both of them here. Um, my Z scale is just focusing on how long I want these um, lattice structures to be. And then as far as position, this is where it's based off of. So I just grabbed a property from up above um, to have it fit properly to my body. So the next we have the trimmed lattice. And if you see, as I toggle this visibility off, how it cuts away, um, that's because how the trim lattice block works is I'm bringing in that original lattice, then I'm also bringing in that design space. So what's happening is it's grabbing every part of those lattices that are remaining that remain with inside um, that body. And then the next step, I'm gonna skip over this here just for some visualization is offsetting that lattice. So as you can see, pretty simple block, but basically what I'm doing is giving this lattice a thickness and therefore bringing it into the implicit world. So if I turn this on, these here look a little bit crazy, but that's because I haven't trimmed them back just yet. But let's take a look at what's actually going on here. So as I mentioned with the offset lattice block, you have your lattice that you're bringing in and also you're bringing in a distance. So this is how far you're offsetting from that lattice. So you're giving it that thickness, giving, bringing it and um, making it into an implicit body. So here I have this modifier. And if I go back up here, that's this modifier here, um, also known as our ramp block. So for those that aren't familiar with the ramp block, this is a very powerful tool that allows you to really drive your designs off of other kinds of fields, off of distance fields, off of any kind of static analysis. So very powerful because it allows you to take in a field um, in which fields are a plenty in the implicit world and end top, and then also drive whatever, a lot of different parameters from there. So in this case, the field that I'm taking in is our outer space. So if I turn that visibility back on, we're talking about this green space up here. And because this body is an implicit body, that just means that it's a field. 
So where you see the surface, where you see this edge is where that field actually equals zero. So if I'm using this as the field to drive, then let's look at our in minimum and in maximum. So what's going on here as far as in minimum and in maximum, we're talking about the distance in this case from this field. So for my minimum, I'm saying zero millimeters. So that means right along the edge of this field is where this ramp is beginning. Um, and then as far as my in maximum, um, we're talking about these where this funnel ends here. So to take a step back to, um, I think I got a little bit ahead of myself to better understand what's going on here is I'm creating this lattice structure that it's gonna support up here. But in order to do that, in order to print per se with an FDM printer, I have to make sure that all of this can be properly supported. So as you can see up until here, um, it's under that 45 degrees, so we're, we're able to build it. But once we're coming up here, we need that support. So because, um, so for those, Within the 3D manufacturing world, you know that that's, that 45 degree build is very important. It's self-supporting from there. So what I'm trying to actually achieve is getting that 45 degree angle. Um, and in this case, we have the 45 degree angle here, but we wanna make sure it's hitting 45 degrees everywhere, no matter how these are building. And so the way that I'm doing that is with this ramp block. So for my in minimum again, we're at that zero. You can't see it right here because these are covering it up. We're at that zero right at the surface. And my in maximum, again, is where it tapers off and then starts to hit that constant thickness. So as far as my out minimum and out maximum, because I'm bringing this into my distance field here, what's going on is it's offsetting it to whatever distance I'm defining. So for my out minimum, right along this edge, like we said before, I want to offset it to this thickness, to a nice thickness where, first of all, I have my nodes or my beams coming together. And then second, they're coming together at that 45 degree angle where we're able to build. So if I peek into this block here, you'll see we brought into play some of our math blocks, as you can see up above here. Um, not to get into the thick of it, but basically we're bringing in together first um, trying to find that hypotenuse of that X and the Y. So using the Pythagorean theorem up here and then down here, a little bit of trigonometry. So we have that 45 degree angle, 0.785 in radians that we're trying to achieve. And by bringing in those values, we're able to drive it so that we know that we're getting to that thickness up here. So within our out minimum, so the thickness that we're actually achieving, we want to make sure that we have, um, again, bringing in that Pythagorean theorem so that we're getting that full thickness and therefore building along that 45 degree angle. Once it comes to our out maximum, that's basically once we get to that point, once we get to that 45 degrees, where the ramp block is then going to clamp from there. So right here, we hit that 0.5 millimeters that I defined. And then anywhere beyond that, so anywhere anywhere further from this um, surface, we're, we're reaching that 0.5 millimeters. And so then from there, we've achieved our um, building of the lattice. We've offset it properly. We have these nice 45 degree builds. But as you can see, this isn't so clean, looks a little funky. So now um, we have just a couple of post-processing steps to bring it all back together. My first step is going to be trimming the lattice. So by using a Boolean intersect and bringing in this offset lattice that I have above, and then also that original design space that my manufacturing support block created, I can bring those two in and trim it back. You can see if I turn off these visibilities, then it just cuts it away there. So that means, um, by having this intersection, I know that this part, this support structure is going to fit into whatever part that I had before. I'm staying within the proper realms. Everything is still self-supported. If I look um, from the side here, you can, still, I'm, you can see I'm still supporting everything that I need 
that was defined before by my voxel grid. And then the last step is bringing um, Boolean unioning the two parts together. So this trimmed lattice and this outer space, you'll see if I isolate this, then it's all gonna turn to one color because this is that singular body. And while you see this little line here, that's just due to my resolution. Um, if I were to bump that up, then I would um, see that it was all one singular part. So then from here, um, the next step would actually be getting this out, getting it um, able to print. So this could be done in a couple of ways, but one um, awesome way that we can do now is uh, to export it as a mesh within the 3MF file format. So this would be pretty easy to read into other softwares um, and get it actually to your printer and um, manufactured. But even before that happens, um, what's great about working within this notebook, working within the NTOP world is that you're really able to iterate. So I could jump in, change the different kinds of lattices, change the scale, um, especially with these variables that I brought out. Um, I can bring in new parts and apply the same exact workflow to that. And in addition, I could even make this into a custom block. So let's say I know these important values that I want by bringing them up into this input and defining an output, I can make it into its own block. Um, oops. For a little bit more information on that, uh, you're definitely go ahead and check out the support site. So here we have uh, exactly a custom block walkthrough shows you exactly how to do um, what I was saying there. And then from there, you're able to really bring in any part, iterate on anything with that same exact workflow um, and work from there. And also while you're on the support site, make sure you're checking out all different kinds of um, tutorials and quick tips so that you can get um, your best practices with NTOP right away. Um, but yeah. That is, oh, and in order to get to the support site, you have a couple of ways. Um, if you are most up to date with your software, you can jump into this question mark right here, click on the support site, and that'll bring you right there. If not, it's support.entopology.com. Um, but that's it for this workflow here. Um, thanks for joining. Thanks for sitting in on this. We'll be able to share this information with um, you going forward. Also, thanks for joining one of our NTOP Live section, uh, sessions. Um, we'll be hosting NTOP Live sessions Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 um, a.m. Eastern time. So we'll continue to show you some exciting workflows that we've been working on. Um, let us know what content you want to see. Um, and yeah, let's see. Also, there's a link on the main site of NTOP. Okay, let's see. I'm just looking at some of the questions that are coming in. Different. Hmm. Okay, yep, we have a couple of questions coming in. Um, they might need a little more specification. So I'm gonna jump on, uh, follow up with a little bit of one-on-one -on -one for those of you sending in questions. Um, but yeah, great working with all of you. Thank you for sitting in on this and I'll be sure to get in touch with those of you who um, have questions. Also feel free to reach out um, and looking forward to working with many of you in the future. Thank you.